The esoteric teaching is very powerful. It is powerful because it is purely spiritual. It spreads by confidential spiritual means. Therefore, it is not an ordinary religion. Ordinary religion spreads by making organizations, churches, and temples, and cultivating converts. But that is just external, superficial. The esoteric teaching is not like that. The esoteric teaching spreads through pure consciousness. Pure consciousness can never be affected by material means. Therefore, no one, no organization, no matter how powerful in the materialistic sense, can stop it. What do I mean by pure consciousness? This esoteric teaching is between the soul and God. It is not an external thing. It spreads by developing our spiritual relationship with God. No one can frustrate God's plan, because he is unlimitedly powerful. So this esoteric teaching goes on, confidentially, between the soul and God, by God's power. Do you know how mushrooms grow? They spread tiny threads called mycelium through the ground. Silently, invisibly, patiently, they grow. Then when conditions are right, in a single night a mushroom sprouts up. Each mushroom releases millions of spores. Each microscopic spore is a seed that can start a whole new mushroom colony. So you cannot stop the spread of mushrooms. The actual mushroom is just the final stage. As soon as the mushroom appears, its purpose is complete. The microscopic spores are pouring out, the wind is scattering them far and wide. It is too late to stop them. Even if you destroy the mushroom, you are helping to spread it. The spores will get on your skin and clothing, and you will scatter them wherever you go. They can hibernate for years. Then when conditions are ripe, any one spore can create another whole colony of mushrooms. Similarly, this esoteric teaching spreads like mushrooms. It grows very slowly and silently in the secret heart of the soul. Then suddenly, without warning, a single disciple blossoms into enlightenment. Empowered by God, he starts a huge spiritual movement or an influential spiritual school. Then he disappears from this world, or, like Jesus Christ, is neutralized or killed by the enemies of truth. Due to the nature of this material world, his organization gradually becomes corrupt, and his students and followers scatter everywhere like spores. The whole thing seems to be a failure. But each disciple, each follower has been empowered. Each one is a spiritual seed that, when right, can deliver the whole world. And it is so easy to become empowered, so simple to take the first step on this path. No one can prevent it. The most powerful government, the most fanatical religious persecution, cannot stop it. Each and every one of us is a spirit soul. The spirit soul has a deep need, a craving for truth. Ordinary truth is relative truth, and it is conditional. If I say, it is raining, is that the truth? Well, sometimes it is and sometimes it isn't, depending on conditions. Therefore, this is called conditional truth. But the esoteric teaching is absolute truth. The absolute truth is always true, in any condition, at any time, and for every being. For example, if I say, God is omnipotent and omniscient, that is esoteric, absolute truth. There is no condition in which this statement is untrue. Therefore, it is unconditional, or absolute truth. We all have a deep craving for this absolute truth. Absolute truth is our spiritual food. It feeds our soul, nourishes our spiritual existence. So when we hear the esoteric teaching, we are getting a kind of spiritual nutrition that satisfies our hunger for absolute truth. And just like the absolute truth is eternally true, the effects of hearing it are also eternal. All you have to do is to appreciate this esoteric teaching one time. Just one time if you think, yes, this is the truth. Then you have taken one step. You have taken one step towards God, but God has taken ten steps toward you. So you can never lose that advancement on the path. From that time on, God works silently in your heart, and gradually you will take another step, and then another. And one day you too will be ripe, you too will bloom into enlightenment. One day you will become a master teacher, and enlighten others with the absolute truth. No one can stop you, because the entire process is spiritual and confidential. The entire process goes on in your spiritual heart of hearts, between yourself and God. I'm just giving you the seed. I am just a mushroom scattering spores. Someday I will disappear, but thousands more like me will take my place, and the process will continue, either in this esoteric school or in another one based on the same eternal esoteric teaching. It will continue either in this life or in the next, but it cannot be stopped. Do you think I am the only master teacher or the only confidential initiate of the esoteric teaching? I've had news for you. There are thousands. 
tens of thousands. And any of them could start an esoteric school, make millions of disciples, or even save the entire planet, if God so wills. The materialistic civilization is finished. Like everything material, its time of disintegration has finally arrived. Even now, it is dying, falling apart before our eyes. For thousands of years, the materialists tried their best to keep this esoteric teaching a secret, but all their efforts to stop it have failed. The dying materialistic civilization may make one or two more feeble efforts to stop this movement, but it cannot be stopped. Stopping the esoteric teaching is beyond their power. Our school has decentralized and spread all over the planet. We have won. We cannot be stopped. The next age belongs to us. So the materialistic civilization that we have endured on this planet for the last 5,000 years is over. It's at the end of its run. They tried really hard to stop uh, spiritual civilization, to make it a secret, and to bring the process of spiritual life under state control. But it cannot be done. They themselves, the scientists in particular, limit their sphere of action to the objective world, to the world of phenomena, the material world, the world of cause and effect. But the esoteric teaching does not exist in that world. Oh, we might have a few temples or a few schools or a few buildings or organizations here and there. But that's not really the esoteric teaching. That's just some extension to help us interface with this material world. The real esoteric teaching is completely spiritual. That means it's totally subjective. Everything spiritual exists only subjectively, just like consciousness. Consciousness can never be weighed or measured objectively. It can never be proven in a laboratory, and it can never be changed or altered in any way. Yet, we all know that we are conscious. Consciousness is, in fact, the basic fact of experience. Without consciousness, there is nothing else. So consciousness is the most fundamental and basic thing there is. Yet the scientists refuse to acknowledge its existence, even though their consciousness is the source of all their knowledge and discoveries. Now, can such a contradictory civilization long exist? Can the same civilization that killed a personality like Jesus Christ long endure? Because it is robbing their, their own citizens of the most basic uh, rights of all living entities, which is to advance spiritually. So a state is built by the bricks of its citizens, and if you make the bricks weak, then the whole structure will fall. And this is what they have done. They have systematically weakened each and every human being by denying the spiritual process of self-realization. How long can that go on before the whole edifice tumbles, crumbles into ruins? And this is what is going on today. You cannot change basic human nature, and the most basic aspect of human nature is that we are spiritual beings. So spiritual beings have an innate hunger for the absolute truth, and you cannot uh, take this hunger away artificially. Either you can starve them, or you can feed them. Our present leaders have chosen to starve us, to make us weak. But that doesn't remove the craving, and as soon as any truth is available, people will snap it up. That's human nature. You can't change that. That's the nature of the spirit soul, and that nature is eternal. So even if you fashion a society driven by advertising for useless, unnecessary, manufactured goods, and even if you create an economy based on the exploitation of workers in huge hellish factories and terrible stifling offices, even if you take us away from the land and away from uh, the material elements that are fashioned by God and you create a complete artificial society where everyone just stays indoors all the time and doesn't know anything of reality, even if you could do that, huh? even if that were possible, you could not remove this basic thirst for truth within the soul. But the leaders don't know any of this. They don't understand. They think that they can actually control people just by restricting the movements of their bodies or by controlling the contents of their minds through the media.